My presentation aims to offer a redefinition of the concept of entrepreneurial functions, and it's founded on two pillars. The first one is the evolution of the entrepreneurial function concept. I will show you in a very synthetic way how the concept of entrepreneurial function has evolved within our school from Cantillon, passing from Mrs. Rothbard, Kirchner, and Huerta de Soto. The second pillar includes three theoretical reconsiderations. The creative concepts, the distinction between entrepreneurial function and coercive function, and the entrepreneurial function frame, that is the importance of fact and the general principle of law. Let's start with the entrepreneurial function concepts uh, evolution. In his essay on the nature of trade in general, Cantillon, explicitly understand that entrepreneurship is an aid to uncertainty environment. And also implicitly, he understands that entrepreneurship exerts a coordination power in society or, or market, and also we can, it's possible to infer from his, from his thinking the creative essence of entrepreneurship. However, the concept of entrepreneurship that Cantillon used in his essay is not functional. Cantillon has not conceived the idea of entrepreneurial function. His concept of entrepreneur was physical, personal. An entrepreneur for Cantillon was a type of person, not a function of human action. A similar concept, a, 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 a similar concept of person entrepreneur I found in Jean Baptiste Say and also in the capitalist entrepreneur of Karl Menger. It was Mises the first to describe the idea of entrepreneurial function itself. That is, the idea that the entrepreneurship is a catalytic function intrinsic to human action, and that all human beings are therefore entrepreneurs. In other words, an entrepreneur is not a type of person, but a function that we all exercise as human beings. And so, he proposed a definition of entrepreneur as an, and I'm citing his word, acting man exclusively see, seen from the aspect of their certainty inherent in every action. Mises, in addition, attributes a special capacity of understanding implicitly linked to the creativity essence, to this entrepreneurial function and place it as the market and production driving force, which logically includes social coordination. Murray Rothbard synthesized the concept of entrepreneurial function following the thinking of his teacher. Thus, for Rothbard, action in an environment of uncertainty is called an act of entrepreneurship. He also understands entrepreneurship as a human function, human action function, and not as a description of a type of person. He says that actually, in his work, actually in economic analysis of the market, we are concerned with functions rather than whole person per se. On the other hand, when Rothbard describes the capitalist as an entrepreneur, recognizes the importance of us being alert by estimating the, the future market situation and therefore recognizing the creative aspect of it. Even he doesn't use this term specific terms. Is that act of entrepreneurship which implies a speculation, which coordinates and corrects the market's imbalance permanently, bringing them closer to the equilibrium situation that it's never reached? Finally, when Rothbard states, based on the tradition of natural law, that only two ways of appropriation exist, namely the economic means of production and exchange and the political means of expropriation, both derived concept from Franz Oppenheimer, he's explicitly warning that human action must be subject to law and that not every action is legitimate, ethical, or efficient. 
Then Israel Kirchner contributes a synthesis of Mises' theory of entrepreneurial function and integrate it into Hayek's vision or concept of knowledge and learning. Thus, for example, when Kirchner talks about the pure entrepreneur, which includes intrinsic uncertainty, he refers to the same idea of Mises' entrepreneurial function. And when he refers to the importance of individual alertness, he is specifically considering the knowledge concept of Hayek. This integration allows him to recognize, not implicitly, as Mises or Rothbard did, but explicitly, the creative essence of entrepreneurial function. The nature and essence of Kirchner alertness concept is, in his own word, active, creative, and human rather than a passive, automatic, and mechanical. For Kirchner, entrepreneurs' benefits are pure because it's the result of one's, one's own creation. So Kirchner considers that it's possible to apply the finder-keeper ethical principle. And therefore, the creation is legitimate and fair property of the individual who found, discovered, or created through his or her alertness. In addition, he recognized that one of the fundamental characteristics of the entrepreneurial function is equilibrating or adjustment force in the market, which also includes a driving force of it. The last one, Jesus Huerta de Soto made a masterful synthesis of the entrepreneurial function characteristic and managed to integrate them under the concept of dynamic efficiency. Huerta de Soto, as Mrs. and Rothbard thought, understand that entrepreneurial function is inherent to every human action. Furthermore, Huerta de Soto understand that entrepreneurial function requires alertness, according to the Kirchner definition. That is, a discovery of profit opportunities. And in the same way, he recognized the coordinating aspect of entrepreneurial function and understand it as a market driving force too. However, although based on Rothbard and Kirchner, and like both, Huerta de Soto clearly and explicitly integrates the ethical characteristic that the entrepreneurial function must, as he's, he using this word, comply with the law, primarily based on the right to private property. Thus, Huerta de Soto will add that since entrepreneurial function is coordinating, its prevention produces uncoordination. That is to say, prevents the adjustment that the market requires. The concept of dynamic efficiency of Huerta de Soto can be considered an evolutionary and natural extension of the entrepreneurial function itself. Therefore, at this point, a redefinition is required that consider the current state of the concept. You are seeing the, the evolution of the concept in this table. And now let's see the three theoretical reconsiderations. While it is true that Kirchner interchangeably used terms such as discover, innovate, or create, his last argument is based on the fact that whether is it a discovery or a creation, it is produced ex nihilo. Following this position, in the same way Jesus Huerta de Soto understands the creative or discovery component of entrepreneurial function as an ex novo or ex nihilo creation, that is, an act through which man creates out of nothing. But let's be stricter and let's see what's happened with the words we use. If the term discovery is used when defining human creativity, its meaning could be understood as the simple act of uncovering what is covered, manifesting or exposing something that are already existed previously, that was already there before it was discovered. And by using this meaning, two Bronx conclusions could be reached. The first could lead us to understand that entrepreneurial function is to take advantage of opportunities that are already there, that are already given in the market, 
aspect widely criticized by the Austrian School of Economics. And the second, linked to the first, that since it is there, there is no legitimate argument for the right to private property. Because it's not a creation of the individual who has found or discovered it. But as mentioned, neither Kirchner nor Huerta de Soto used the creativity or discovery in the strict sense expressed. Both ultimately understand human discovery or creativity as an ex nihilo or ex novo act. That is, they use the term discovery and creativity as a synonym for creation in the strict sense. It was where the case, then it, if, if that was if, if that were the case, then the legitimacy of private ownership of such discoveries or creations, that is, creations in the strict sense, will be perfectly justified. And Kirchner ethical principles should be reformulated as who created out of nothing keeps it. However, there is no scientific way to sustain logically and through evidence that human being is able to create something out of nothing. In short, Austrian School of Economics could find itself at a crossroad with no way out. Whether it assumes that human creativity or discovery is of an ex nihilo or ex novo nature, promoting a scientifically improbable idea, as if, he, as if we describe this as a mere discovery or something that it is there, already there. The solution to this paradox is found by understanding creativity as constitute in the human capacity to associate existing ideas from the intellectual power of the soul, that it's the mind, and or combine existing matter from the property of the physical element of nature. Thus understood, every productive process is a creative process involving engendering or generating new ideas, action, products, or services in the markets. It is therefore the particular, special, and unique way of association or combination of ideas or matter which makes possible the engendering or generation, I repeat, engendering or generation of new ideas, action, opportunities, product, service, and so on. So, human creativity is a higher category or level than a mere discovery, which strictly speaking, animals can also perform a discovery and is in a lower category than creation, which, strictly speaking, only God can do it. The second and third reconsideration, or theoretical reconsideration. As it has been presented, Austrian school authors tend to present entrepreneurial function as a synonym with human action. In this regard, it's important to clarify that while entrepreneurial function implies human action, not every human action implies entrepreneurial function. As the table show now, for entrepreneurial function to exist require not only uncertainty and creativity, but also social coordination and the need to subject to the law. Basically, just as society has coordinating actions, there are also uncoordinating actions. Just as there are actions subject to the law, there are actions that are not subject to the law. But both type of actions share the characteristic of being exercised, ex exercised creatively under an environment of uncertainty. That is why in my definition I propose to add the distinction of coercive function to refer to those violent actions that exercise social uncoordination. Huerta de Soto already noticed this aspect in its most extensive sense. However, instead of redefining the entrepreneurial function concept, Huerta de Soto has, in short, 
extend and develop it under a new concept of dynamic efficiency. Importantly, his, his theory represents a natural evolution of the entrepreneurial function concept in itself, and therefore its reformulation is necessary. In summary, and this is my, my proposal here. My redefinition proposal of entrepreneurial function concept includes the following characteristics. Has a framework of inherent uncertainty. Exert a power and function of social coordination. It is understood as a function catalactic category, but, as I put here, but is not exactly a synonym for all human action and therefore must be distinguished from the coercive function that is uncoordinating in society or market. Then it is essentially a creative as the act through which it is engendered or generate from the existing through association or combination. That is to say, it's not a mere discovery nor an ex nihilo or ex novo creation, must be subject to the general principle of law and therefore is the basis of the force that drives the market and production. Now, you can see here what, what is my reconsiderations in the white fonts. And my proposal of the definition is this, entrepreneurial function is human ability to associate and or combine ideas and or matter, creativity, in this way, under the general principle of law, which has coordinating effects on society and or market. And in turn, coercive function is human ability to associate and or combine ideas or matter, creativity also, outside the general principle of law which has uncoordinating effects on society on our market. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very fascinating uh, talk. We have time, unfortunately, for only one question. So uh, with the, uh, the gentleman in blue shirt uh, there, yes, you. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Hi. So my question would be, what do you mean with the law? Because if we think, if we make a, think an experiment and say we have no law now, and there is a law being implemented, there was no law before this law was implemented. So no. is the law the natural law, which is to be discovered by intellectual processes, or what do you mean by law? Okay. No, I use I'm I'm using the tradition of of Hayek in that sense. I'm not referring to the legislation. But the law in, in, in Spanish, we say that los principios generales del derecho, no, no, not the legislation of a nation. Okay, well, thank you very much. And thank you. Ask more questions.